What a world! How's everybody doing today, tonight, tomorrow, whatever time, place, space, day before, day after, time continuing, flux capacitor, 1985, whatever realm, dimension you're listening to this, I hope you're doing great and feeling blessed, y'all. Well, today we're going to do a little talking on some Mandela stuff. Everybody's favorite topic, stuff that has us all wondering which way is up and which way is down, and for even remembering that right. But before I get into that, I got to give a quick thank you to everybody once again. It's time for some of that kumbaya stuff, hugs and kisses. Guys, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, the support, and, uh, you know, the channel. I'm not the biggest by any means. I'm not claiming like I'm Superman out here, but you guys, y'all make me feel that way sometimes. Oh, that's so touching. Golly gee. Anyways, really, I really do appreciate it, y'all. Thank you so much for the support. For all the haters out there, all the trolls. I don't mind you guys either. You know, go ahead, watch the videos. Sure, do whatever. But keep your comments civil. If you start just flat out insulting people and... um, I guess what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Being an ass... I'm going to cut you off, all right? People should be able to leave comments without being ridiculed completely down to the bone for something that they think or say. Just because you believe your way is right, hell, that doesn't make you right either. So keep it civil, y'all. But again, thank you guys. I appreciate everything. Love the comments. Keep them coming, y'all. I know it takes me a bit sometimes to get back. I do my best. I work my ass off all through the week. The weekend, I try to do the family thing, so I slip this in when I can, y'all. I'd love to do it full time one day, and we'll see if I don't get censored. Recently, uh, YouTube decided to yank some ads because they dubbed it not appropriate for one of my videos, the one where I'm walking with my son on a hike, just having a father-son chat. That's inappropriate, huh? Yeah. Thanks, YouTube. So today, let's get back on that Mandela stuff. We're going to talk about human anatomy. You know, everything from bones to the organs, you name it. Um, I know it's been done a lot, y'all, but this is one that I think is a big deal when it hit me. You know, it was one thing to have movies change, but it's another thing to go, damn, something inside of me changed. That's kind of a big deal, if you ask me. I think it is. I think you guys think it is, too, those who believe in the effect. So we're going to start all the way from the top and work our way down to the bottom today. So let's get going with that. Now just starting off with the skull. I mean, here's a couple of basic things. You know, if you look at the old skull versus the new skull, for one, with the old reality, it was much rounder. You know, normal looking skull. Now the damn thing looks like a, like a football in E.T. had a baby. It's all stretched out. Nothing like what I remember it. You know, it slopes in the back differently, and it slopes in the front differently. You can see these angles. They're pretty apparent. I mean, not, definitely not what I remember, and I'm sure a lot of you don't remember that either. Now, working our way to the side around the temples, we have these big dents now on the side. I never remember them being that pronounced. They were not that big. Now, it's like, another football or something slammed into the side of my head. That's not right. We didn't have these big, giant dents. At least that's the way I don't, I remember it. I don't remember it being that all the way down the side. Big old dent, like a giant grabbed me by the head. I mean, I had a football head before, but now I really got a football head. And working our way down, the jawbone, the backside, Looks completely different. It's much larger where it meets up into the skull. Uh, the lower jaw right there at that 90 degree. It's a little fatter now. And there's some other smaller bones I'm not familiar with, so I'm not even going to pretend like I could even say the words. I won't do them any justice. So there's actually a video out there with uh, Dr. Terrence Lupe. I think a lot of you guys know him. Uh, he's catching some flack lately about having a black cat. Guys, cut him some slack. It's a damn black cat. Give me a break. But... He knows what he's talking about. He's a former chiropractor or still is a chiropractor. You guys should check out his video. I might actually put a link to it in the description. And he, he just, he really knows what he's talking about, y'all. He says words I'm not even sure if they're English. 
Now for the big one, I think, on the skull for most of us would be the eye socket. The eye sockets look totally different from what I remember. I never remember these big bones in the back with these little slits through it. It's just foreign to me. You can see bones from, you know, back in the old days when they did black and white movies using real bones, you can see the skulls were open. You can also look at masks all throughout movies and history. You can still find older skulls that seem to be this way. And every once in a while, you might find a gem. But once again, I'm noticing as time goes on researching something like this, you're seeing skulls that seem to be disappearing. You know, when I first started doing this, you know, about a year ago, looking up when I found out about the skulls and everything, I was looking them up, and I found many skulls that didn't have those plates. But now, now that I want to make this damn video, I go back and I can't find these same pictures. And once again, that 2.0 Mandela's cleaning up its mess. I think the D-Wave or whatever's doing this is getting better as time goes on. As I said, you know, once again, the skulls just look completely different. One rounder, one more sloped, footballed out. So, not the way I remember it, y'all. Let's move on down to the shoulder blades. The shoulder blades are different to me also. Now they seem to be smaller with more detail, smaller bones mixed in. The ones I remember were just kind of these big plates, very simple. Um, nothing much to them. They, uh, in my opinion, seem more efficient. Now it's just like a newer car. You got more parts, and it's like somebody redesigned us. We're the new walking Lexus or something, and we got all these computerized parts and smaller parts. We're getting harder to take care of or something. Too much detail. I think it's too difficult to take care of. Now moving to the front side, the uh, sternum bone. Now the bone I remember wasn't this big. It just seemed to come about halfway down, and then you had cartilage. So it would flex a lot. You know, you had that movement to where somebody jumped on your chest. It wouldn't just snap. Now you got a lot more bone. And as I keep saying, I imagine a lot of you look at these things and think, damn, that's foreign. Now the rib cage. Now this is one that there's been a lot of debate about. And if it's anything like all these other things, there's probably more than one reality. We're probably all remembering different things. Now the rib cage I remember was a little bit bigger and didn't have as much crap jammed up in it. You know, as we would say in the country, now they got 10 pounds of shit in a five-gallon bucket. We've got everything going up in here. The ribcage, I remember, it kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, and this could just be my memories and what I was drawing as a kid, but it was kind of like barreled up top and thinned in the bottom. And, but it was much bigger. Now this thing's really tight and smaller with all these weird connective areas in the ribs that I don't remember. The way these floaters are all the way from up top around the sternum bone, or not sternum, the collarbone and the neck, all the way down to the floaters in the lower back, back. I don't remember these things being like that, and especially in the front, the way they connect. That's not what I remember. I remember kind of a smooth bone coming down with these other bones connecting into it. You know, this thing now, it, it's just strange looking to me. Now, the collarbone. Now, in my reality, the collarbone had a lot more curve to it, kind of like a beach cruiser handlebar. And now we got like this trick straight bar going. These look totally different to me once again. You know, I always remember when I drew this, it would always have that curvature to it. And now it's much straighter than what I remember. The whole body just looks foreign to me now. It does not look like what I remember. And I know I keep saying that over and over, but I can't reiterate it enough that my memories do not match up with what I'm seeing here. And there's a lot of evidence out there that go along with my memories. You know, everything that's in the movies, these models and all these masks that we see, they had to come from somewhere. Somebody had to look at something and have that be their model. I don't think they just willy-nilly go, oh, this is what a skull looks like, or this is what the skeletal structure looks like. They had to get it from somewhere. 
So why does theirs look different than what we're seeing in the books? Now, I'm not going to claim that's the only reason why, but I'm just saying, could be. The spine now looks like some damn cyborg thing. It's so much thicker than what I remember. It seems like you could throw me off a building. I could land on my spine and walk away now. That thing is massive. It's got some beef to it. This was for dinner. The spine is big. You know, I remember uh, a normal-looking spine. This thing looks robotic now, especially up top. I don't remember these bones coming out the top around the neck area. And working our way down the spine to the tailbone, I remember as a kid looking at the tailbone and always thinking it looks like we used to have a tail, like somebody chopped it off and stuffed it in us. Now, it's this big-ass, a perfect phrase, big-ass ass plate. <laughs> you know, you hear about people breaking their tailbones and all that kind of stuff. It looks like they could take a quick kick to the ass and walk away without flinching. Not that I'm going to attempt that. I'm just saying. Now, as far as the skeletal structure, I'm sure a lot of you keep thinking the same thing I think. That it doesn't look right. And I know you naysayers are out there going, You guys don't know nothing. You ain't a doctor. Fine. I'm not. Nor are you. So who's to say or judge? We're going off of what we remember, and there are, is some evidence of what we're saying. There's things backing up what we're saying. Now, I understand you guys can say the same thing. Well, look at an anatomy book. Well, yeah, and Columbus discovered America, so yeah. But it, like I keep saying, though, it, it's foreign, and it's strange, and the fact that there's this possibility that inside my body everything is different. That just trips me out a little. That really weirds me out. That that just something I didn't think I would ever have to deal with in my lifetime. Let's keep on going, y'all. Let's work our way on into the inside. Let's start from the top again. We're going to go ahead and start at the brain. The old cerebellum. Not the medulla oblongata. Medulla. Mama says them gators mad. Because they got all them teeth. No, boy. That's the medulla oblongata. <laughs> I had to get that out. But anyways, the cerebellum is... Its shape, its size is a bit off from what I remember seeing in pictures. And the only reason I have to look at some of this stuff is because my girlfriend is actually... She's in medical school right now. She's doing things related in the medical field. And so I do see a lot of this stuff. And I've been seeing it for years. And some of the things just don't add up. I get quizzed a lot. I read a lot of what she has. She's got books lying around everywhere. Now, also with the brain, this is one thing I heard the uh, uh, Dr. Terrence say, uh, Mr. Lupo, Lupe, or however you say his name. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not doing that justice. But he was saying the back side of the brain looks different. It's like we're using more of the reptile side of our brain now than the thinking side, which would, in my opinion, would explain a lot of society today and um, why people are so easily pro programmable. You know, they just follow the leader. They do what they're told. They stay in line. You know, Big Brother tells them what to do, how to eat, how to sleep, how to think. Well, reptiles, that's about how they think. Eat, sleep, drink, mate, you know, repeat. And that's about it. People who think why when, where, how, that, you know, that you're told that's wrong now. Don't believe that. Question things. You know, if we don't question things, we'll never know. There's never a dumb question. Never. You know, people always say, oh, I got a dumb question. No, there's no such thing, y'all. If you don't ask questions, you won't know. So it's not dumb. You want to know the answer to something? Ask. Somebody calls you dumb for asking? Tell them to kiss your ass. Now, working our way down... The damn liver, um, for all the drinkers out there, I'm sure you're happy because the liver looks two or three times the size of what it was. i got to imagine that, um, what is it, cirrhosis of the liver has gone down a pretty good percentage. This thing looks like you could swallow a keg and not be affected. Definitely a lot bigger than what I remember. The placement of it is a hair different than what I remember. 
you know, and that and everything around it, the intestine, everything's just kind of shoved up in there. The intestines look completely different. That 10 pounds of shit in that bucket. Now, one of the things that really gets me is the kidneys. They're so out of place now, in my opinion. They're a lot higher than what they were. Way higher. Now, I grew up in martial arts. I was in MMA for about six years. I used to teach Muay Thai, boxing. Uh, it was my passion. It was my life. I mean, 26 year, years of my life I've spent in martial arts and mixed martial arts. I love it. It's like football to me. Now, a couple of the shots that we had in these sports were liver shots, kidney shots. Well, placement of a kidney shot, if I were to do that same maneuver to where the kidneys where I was taught, I guess I'd be hitting the wrong spot now because now they're way up higher. That's not where we threw these shots when we would throw them. They would go lower and vice versa. When a doctor, let's say you go in for a lower back pain, they used to do a kidney test to see if it was a kidney stone or something, they would hit you on the back. And I've had one done, and it was much lower than where they show the kidneys now. So me personally, that one really hits home because, like I said, I, that was one of my favorite shots. So definitely that one is different for me. They are crammed up in there way higher than what they were. That's one that I really know and hit me, hits me personally. And the last one being that really kind of gets to me is the heart. You know, we're always taught to place our hand over our heart. We're always taught to shoot to the heart. I have targets with a heart on it. Everything is to the left. Nothing is in the middle on my target. I wish I could, actually, I need to find these targets. I wouldn't mind showing you guys. You know, a vampire, where'd you hit him? You know, all these movies where you had to do something with a heart and you missed, or like I say, placing your hand over your heart for the pledge. Why did we do that? Why were all these things said? You can also go back and look up old sketches of anatomy and, and structure, and you can find some of these things, these residuals hidden away there. There's a picture that Leonardo da Vinci drew of the heart, and it's to the left and on its side like what most of us remember. So there's still things out there that show what we remember. They're just hard to find, y'all, and they're getting harder every day to find. You know, I always say trust your memories. We hear trust your heart, too. Trust your mind. Trust all these out-of-place, out-of-shape things inside of you. As history goes, we're all that's left. We're the ones here to keep what we remember going on, and I hope you folks are doing the same. I know it can be scary and terrifying, and we're all supposed to live for the now and the moment. Everybody keeps saying it's an amazing time, and I keep saying, yes, it is. But there are things that do strike a little bit of fear into me, and I can't help that. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way. You know, always remember what counts the most. We get caught up in this stuff, but never forget why we keep doing what we do. I can't spread that message enough. This stuff can easily suck you in. And that's, it's not bad to be really invested in this. There's good reasons. You know, there's definitely merit to it. But make sure you take that time to spend with your loved ones, y'all. And keep your eyes open, everybody. Keep searching. You know, if, if you're questioning something, make a note of it. If you see something, take a picture of it. Because you never know tomorrow. When you go back to look at that thing or read it or do something, if it's going to change or be different, and that, by God, it sounds crazy, but it's happening. I never in my lifetime thought I'd be in a situation like this or seeing things like this. I was very political, and I thought that would be the extent to my life. But things have definitely gotten deeper here lately, and they seem to keep getting deeper. You know, with AI and, and technology going the way it is, we never know what tomorrow's going to hold. So definitely take every moment for what it is. It's like I say, you never know what tomorrow brings or takes away. So for all of you out there fighting the fight, keep on fighting. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Keep your heart and your mind strong. Keep your loved ones near. Never forget why you do what you do. Never forget what's most important. And as I always say, y'all stay incredible.
Y'all stay blessed. See ya.